We continue with the vector addition, but this time the triangle law, the paradigm law, or the commutative law of vector addition. The paradigm law or the commutative law of vector addition. So here we consider this to be a paradigm PQRX is a paradigm. And then PQ, P, X, the directed line segment PQ and PX here yeah, represent the two non parallel sides of the paradigm PQRX. Okay, say that A, okay, denotes the, um, the side PQ and B denotes the side PX. So these are vectors. Okay, so PQ, the line segments PQ and PX are represented by A and B. So we have this geometric uh, two-dimensional uh, figure here, okay? So this is a paragraph PQRX. So PQRX is a paragraph. And please take note of the way the vertices are labeled. Uh, look at the order of the letters here given as a paragraph PQRX. It's a power gram. So I move from P, then Q, R, X. Okay, so I start the labeling from here, P, then I move to Q, then R, X. Okay, so that's how we label geometric um, figures with four or more, okay, vertices of size. For three, uh, for geometric figures, let's say two-dimensional or three-dimensional geometric objects with three vertices or uh, yeah, three sides, okay, um, that is not a problem, okay, whichever way you label the vertices, the three vertices, okay, you'll get it right, okay, you'll never get it wrong. But with four or five, four or more vertices, we have to be careful the way we label the vertices. So, here, that's what I have done. I started the labeling from here, P. Then I look at the next letter that comes after P is Q. Okay, so I do that in either counterclockwise or clockwise direction. So in this sense, okay, so I use the anti-clockwise direction. P, then I go to Q. Then the next letter that comes after Q is X, is R, then R, I get X. So this paragraph P, Q, R, X, okay? Or you go this way, P, Q, uh, R, X. You, you, you don't start the labeling. Let's see, this is P, Q, R, and then P, Q, R, X. No, uh, uh, P, uh, North, South, East, and West. No, you have to be careful the way we label the objects. If the size are more than four, or more or four, okay? If you have uh, four or more vertices of size, then you have to be careful. Okay, so this is the parallelogram, and we know this, we know the properties of a parallelogram, okay? And of course, uh, let me remind you that in this course, if you don't know the properties of the geometric figures, objects, okay, you'll find it difficult to solve questions. I mean, uh, you, you, the course, Will not be easy for you and these are the basic things that we we, we 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 should know because some of these things we did this way back uh in the primary school and all that so uh we should be in a position to you know state the properties of those things because if um we ask a question on a paragraph and you don't know the properties of paragraph it will be difficult for you to write down the solutions of that question so I entreat each one of you uh, to look at these things again. I know you have them, but um, just make sure we can produce them when the need uh, arises. Okay, so we have um, this paragraph, and we know paragraph here, this paragraph has two, okay, uh, diagonals, okay, so P, R, Q, X, yeah, are the diagonals. 
but let's concentrate on the diagonal PR, the diagonal PR. Now, this diagonal here, PR, divides uh, the parallelogram into two equal parts, okay, or two triangles here. So you have triangle PQR, okay, and then triangle PXR, okay, coming together to form this parallelogram. Okay, and we know the opposite sides are equal, okay, okay, because the directions and magnitudes are the same. Okay, so there's a parallelogram. Now, uh, if you consider the, the triangle PQR of this parallelogram, and then we apply the law that we established earlier, uh, the triangle law of vector addition to this triangle PQR, you realize that your PR or our PR, which is a diagonal, one of the diagonals of this parallelogram will be PQ plus or QR. So that would be A plus B. So your PR will be A plus B. And again, if we apply, okay, the law, the triangle law of vector addition to this triangle, the other half, PXR, okay, here, uh, we will have a PR, the same PR, to be PX plus or XR. And that will be the vector B plus A. So PR is B plus A and the same time A plus B. So what it means is that A plus B is the same as B plus A. And this gives us, uh, this means that the vector addition is sort of commutative. So here we use the paragraph here to establish that the vector addition is sort of commutative. It's like uh, uh, the addition of real numbers. Two plus three is the same as three plus two. Okay, addition of real numbers is commutative. And so we have, in the same manner, we have uh, addition of real, addition of vectors to be commutative. So we proved it here. Addition of vectors is commutative. Okay. Now, uh, again, still under vector addition, we are looking at the associative law of vector addition. The associative law of vector addition. And this time, we consider three non-zero vectors, okay? Not all lying in the same plane, okay? So these three vectors here, okay? We assume that they do not lie in the same plane, the three. Two can be in the same plane, but we do not want to find the three vectors, okay, sitting in the or lying in the same plane. So, for instance, you can get A, B in the same plane, okay, B, C in the same plane, but we don't want A, B, C to be in the same plane. So, let this be three vectors that do not lie in the same plane, okay. Say that um, A, B, uh, we call A, B represent the side. A, B, letter A, represent the direct line segment A, B, letter B, represents the, the direct line segment B, C, and letter C, represent the direct line segment C, D. So, you have A, B, C, okay? Uh, and this triangle here is formed by these two, okay, non-parallel vectors, okay? And we say A, B is a vector A, and then B, C, the vector B, and then C, D, the vector C. So uh, let's look at this triangle. Let's consider, so we have a number of triangles here. Let's consider the triangle A, B, C, okay? For this triangle, if you apply the triangle law of vector addition to this triangle, you realize that A, C will be A plus B. A, C will be the vector A plus the vector B. And then if you take, so you see, so here A, B lies in the same plane. That's why it will form this triangle. Okay. Now C and B also lies in the same plane. So we have B, C, D here. Okay. B, C, we assume B, C, okay, to be in the same plane. So you have B, C here. Okay, form the size of the two, uh, the, uh, two non-parallel vectors. Okay, that form 
the sides, the two sides of the triangle BCD. So now, when we apply the triangle law vector addition to this very triangle, you realize that the side BD of the triangle BCD will be P, okay, the vector B plus the vector C. So here we got BD, okay, BD to be B plus C and then AC to be what? A plus B. Now, uh, let's look at this, AC. Okay, no, AD. If you take AD, you realize that AD is a third side, okay, of this triangle, A, B, D. And the same time, the third side of this, this triangle, A, C, D. So if you consider triangle A, B, D, and you apply the triangle law of vector addition here, you realize that this side AD will be the side AB, which is A, plus into brackets, the side BD, which is B plus C. Okay, so that gives you this A plus into bracket B plus C. Okay, and that is the direct line segment AD that represents the third side of the triangle ABD. Now, this side AD, okay, also represents the third side of uh, triangle ACD. Okay, and then here, if we apply the triangle law of addition to triangle ACD, you realize that you have your AC to be A plus B in bracket plus CD, which is C, and that is thus. Okay, and here AD is being represented by A plus B in bracket plus C, and same time a plus into bracket b plus c and this means that a plus b in bracket plus c is equal to a plus in bracket b plus c and what this means is that the vector addition okay is associative vector addition is associative okay vector addition is associative it's like um uh, the addition of real numbers we've seen that before in our high school maths, okay, uh, that uh, we saw this, uh, that uh, our um, uh, addition of real numbers is associative. So you have two plus three in bracket, plus what one to be equal to two plus into bracket uh, three plus one, okay. So in the same way, we have addition of factors to be associative. And we've just proved it that yes, addition of factors is whole associated and of course this is the proof now vector subtraction so we are, we are done with vector addition now subtraction how do we subtract one vector from the other how do we subtract one vector from the other so uh we say uh is the subtraction of vector b from a is just addition of what the additive inverse of b which is negative b to a Okay, and this is um, the illustration. We take the vector B to be OB, the line segment OB, and the vector A to be the line segment uh, OA. So the two vectors are not the same, or they are not parallel. And then we assume that they form the two non parallel sides of what? The parallelogram. Once they are not parallel, okay, they form the two non-parallel sides. You can use them as uh, the uh, two non-parallel sides of what uh, a parallelogram. So we have this vector, and here we are taking this from this. How do we do it? Okay, we want to take the vector b from the vector a. So we first look at this vector, okay, and we reverse the direction. And if we reverse the direction, this what happens? You negate that vector. Okay, we reverse it, but keep okay the length of the vector. Okay, uh, the same. So this is negative b. Okay, so it's in the uh, opposite direction of b. So this is b, and this is our a. Now, if this form a parallelogram, then what it means is that this side ad is also negative b. So OD, which is one of the diagonals of this, okay, parallelogram OADC, 
will be A plus negative B using the triangle law of retardation. A plus negative B. And A plus negative B is equal to A minus B, which is this. So that is the way we subtract two vectors.